We were saying the state, the story of Ayub alayhi salam that he was patient in the times of easiness, so it was easy for him to be. It wasn't easy, but he was able to show patience in the time of difficulty. After his children passed away, his farms and property burned, and he had the disease of some say leprosy. So anyway, that's the concept of patience and the story that we were talking about about the man uh, who repented to Allah and Allah sent rain. Um, he um, he was the reason Allah withheld rain. So that shows us our sins can lead Allah to make a decision. It's not that the ecosystem that Allah created um, is you know self-sustaining. It's Allah who sustains everything. It is Allah who is in control. Of the entire universe, it doesn't do anything on its own. Yes, Allah has made a, a world of means and whatnot, but it, that doesn't happen without the will of Allah. Okay, next story, alhamdulillah, um, is also very dear to my heart, um, and it's mentioned from Wahab ibn Munabih, who was one of the scholars of the Jews uh, who accepted Islam, and he taught a lot of history of Bani Israel. Uh, to some of the companions and the later generations. So many books of tafsir, if you read uh, the, the background of stories, um, his, his narrations and traditions will come up. So he said, In the time of Musa alayhi salam, كان في زمن موسى عليه السلام شاب عات مسرف على نفسه فأخرجوه من بينهم لسوئف عليه so there was a man in Bani Israel in the time of Musa. He was so sinful, like he had transgressed the limits of Allah so much until his own people, like basically we can say, deported him in our sense. Like they kicked him out of their land because they were afraid of the, the harm that can come from his sins. Because of his bad deeds. Allah. So this man, he, as he was leaving, you know, the you can say the city limit or the borders of that land, death approached him. While he was at the, the door, you can say the entrance or the exit of that land. So Allah sent revelation to Prophet Musa. Allah. So Allah told Musa, imagine how Allah, you know, he cared for this this servant of his who was Muslim. He believed in uh, Tawheed, the one of Allah, he believed in Prophet Mo Moses as his prophet. So he had, you know, the Islamic theology, but his actions were bad. And uh, Allah, first he commanded Prophet Musa that, O oh Moses, indeed a friend of my friends, like a wali of Allah, has passed away. So I ask you to go to him. And what and you do his uh, ghusl, you know, we, we are uh, it is our obligation to wash the deceased Muslim to give him ghusl, it is a communal obligation that we have to do. Then Allah He said to give incentive for those people to attend this man's funeral, He said, and tell anybody who has a lot of sins that they should they should um, attend the funeral of this person and I will forgive those people who attend the funeral of this person and then Allah he said that oh Moses carry him to me this dead man and enter him in his grief so that I will honor his uh, his uh, his uh, I will honor him myself then Musa he said uh, Fanada uh, Musa Musa announced to the children of Israel nas. So a lot of people uh, you know came near or they, they came in a large number. So when these people came near the dead person, they recognized that dead person who Allah said was a friend of his, 
and that he would forgive them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh sorry, the people said, Ya Nabi Allah, hadha huwa al-fasiq al-ladhi akhrajnah. So Musa was told by the people, oh Moses, this person who is claimed to be a friend of Allah, he's the same, you know, um, sinner, the person who public publicly sinned, al-fisq. He's a fasiq, he used to sin openly. This is the same one we exiled from our land. So Musa became surprised and he said, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a, a revelation in response to these people's claim. Allah, he said, They have told the truth and I am witness upon that. So Allah said the the background of what happened after they exiled him from the land. He looked to his right and he looked to his left. He didn't see any uh, close friend or relative. And he saw himself, you know, estranged and in solitude and basically humiliated. And then he lifted his gaze to me up in the sky. And this shows, even in previous, um, previous scriptures, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way fitting of his majesty he is above his creation he is above his creation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of space and time he is not confined to time but in seven verses of the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned his ulu that his highness and lofty is that he is uh, Allah is the most high so anyhow he lifted his eye to the sky Right to Allah Azza wa Jalla, and He said, "Ilahi, Abdu min ibadik, gharib fi biladi. Lo alim tu anna adabi yazidu fi mulki, wa afu kani yankusu min mulki, lama saaltu kal makfira." Allah, He said, "O oh Allah, I am a servant of Your servants, a strange in Your in a land of Your land. If I knew that You punishing me would increase in Your kingdom, or Your pardoning of me would decrease from Your kingdom." I will not ask you for forgiveness. And I have no refuge nor hope nor anyone to hope in except you. So then he said, Oh Allah, I have heard from your revelation. So the uh, Bani Sa'il had Torah, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He would keep the foundation of religions very similar. To read the oneness of Allah, a risala to accept the message of whatever prophet was sent at that time. And the third is al akhirah to believe in whatever happens life after death in the unseen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, he has kept similar themes um, in the Quran that were mentioned in previous scriptures, as uh, some narrations mentioned that what is covered. Um, in the first uh, 10 surahs is similar to uh, sorry from 10 to 20 is similar to uh, um, what is mentioned in the Torah and after that 20 to 30 is similar to what is mentioned in the Injil and then Allah gave Mufassal in the end you know the concise surahs from Surah to Al-Hujurat until the end of Quran Surah 49 and Quran they are you know very um, short in, in length but they're their verses um, have very profound meaning. So anyway, this man, before he died, he told Allah, he was saying, Oh Allah, I have heard in what you have revealed that you are, or Allah says, I am the all-forgiving, all-merciful. Inni anal ghafoor rahim Fala Oh Allah, do not, you know, let my hopes down. Do not, you know, disappoint in a way my hopes so then Allah told Musa, you know, to explain how Allah made this decision um, and why he told Musa 
to call people to attend this man's funeral because he is a friend of Allah and everyone who attends his funeral will be forgiven no matter if they had many sins or not. So Allah, he said, O Musa, أَفَكَانَ يُحْسِنُ بِي أَنْ أَرُدَّهُ وَهُوَ غَرِيبٌ عَلَى هَذِيَ الصِّفَةِ He said, O Allah, O Musa, O Musa, Allah said, O Musa, if it, is, if it is befitting of me to reject this servant of mine, and he is, you know, estranged, and, you know, uh, in basically solitude in this condition, and he has sought nearness to me and he has humbled himself before me and then Allah he said amazingly that forget the forgiveness of just this one person but Allah said before this man died if he had asked me to forgive all of the sinners of the Muslims in the entire earth, I would forgive them. لِذُلِّ غُرْبَتِهِ And Allah said, why? Because of the uh, intense, you know, uh, humi you know, the humility that he felt. You know, that he was at his lowest moment and he turned to Allah, knowing he had no other option. يَا مُوسَىٰ أَنَا كَهْفُلُ غَرِيبُ وَحَبِيبُهُ وَطَبِيبُهُ وَرَحِمُهُ Then he said, oh Moses, I am like the cave, you know, a place of refuge, uh, metaphorically for the gharib, the person who is, you know, I am the cave for the person who is in a uh, refuge, going from sin to obedience or from disbelief to belief, and I am his beloved. And I am his tabib can be doctor. Allah alam if this is for spiritual, you know, remedies. Allah is the one who can, you know, change our physical health. He can also change our spiritual condition. Warahimuhu. And Allah said, I am the one to show mercy to this person. So alhamdulillah, uh, we've gone quite a while. Um, I think inshallah we will stop here. But uh, this is just a encouragement for us, you know. Um, no matter where we may be, uh, we can always turn to Allah so long as there's life, so long as, you know, um, the sun has arisen from the west in the end of time or the sun reach, uh, the throat, the soul reaches the throat, we can repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even after we repented, we keep seeking forgiveness. Um, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept this, um, meeting of ours may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this a means of forgiving of our, forgiveness of our sins and increase in good deeds Allah ta'ala alam subhanahu wa ta'ala alam subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ta'ala inshallah we'll have uh, one more session maybe this Sunday for those who uh, can make it out inshallah we'll be reading from Madarij uh, al-Sarikin by Imam Abim Al-Qayyim Al-Jawziya Rahimahullah and uh, it talks a lot about rulings related to repentance. You know, this is maybe the, the theory of it, but the practical advice, um, depending on a person's situation, inshallah, uh, we will cover some uh, no, uh, pages of that book, Thank you all for joining. May Allah bless you. Assalamu alaikum.